My name is Emma Lici and today I'd like to share some experiences regarding how data has been used to develop a training program tailored to meet the needs of women and men veterinary power professionals and aimed at improving women farmers' access to animal health care services. Globally, 60% of low-income smallholder livestock farmers are women, however, only 5% of extension services reach women farmers. To address this gender gap, we asked ourselves, how can we better reach women livestock farmers? What challenges do women VPPs face in their profession? And how can we design trainings to better reach women VPPs? We examine these questions in our needs assessment through mixed methods approaches. For the qualitative component, focus group discussions were held in Uganda, South Africa and Nigeria with 391 women and men farmers and 247 women and men PPPs in total. For the quantitative component, 450 women and men PPPs were also surveyed via telephone and results were disaggregated by gender. Because the training takes a blended format with online and face-to-face -face components, our telephone survey examined internet access and digital device ownership. We found that significant digital gender gaps exist in computer and internet access, especially in Nigeria and Uganda. However, smartphone access is nearly the same for women and men in all three countries. So based on these findings, we realized that we needed to make our online learning low bandwidth and smartphone compatible to ensure that women were not unintentionally excluded or disadvantaged by an online format that was not as accessible to them. Qualitative findings reveal that women VPPs face a variety of challenges in their work, including gender bias, mistrust, sexual harassment and issues with restraining large ruminants. Rigid gender norms also mean that in some parts of northern Nigeria, women are not allowed to speak to men they're not related to, and men are not allowed to speak to women they're not related to. Um, and in, in some parts of South Africa, women also reported not being allowed to enter kraals. At farmer level, we found that men are much more likely to speak with animal health professionals compared to women. As I mentioned, seclusion norms in some communities mean that women farmers can only speak to women PPPs. However, women PPPs are much lower in numbers and face many challenges in their profession, further widening the gender gap in veterinary service access for women farmers. So these findings really expose the need to train all VPPs, both women and men, on gender responsive approaches in animal health care delivery, and to empower women VPPs to remain in the profession and to be able to effectively grow their customer basis. So how did we address this? by mainstreaming gender across our training program. We developed online modules on how to implement gender sensitive approaches in animal healthcare service delivery to ensure improved outreach to women farmers. And during face-to-face -face workshops, role play activities and farm visits focused on applying these skills in practice. Role play activities also focused on how women and men PPPs can collaborate as gender allies to overcome gender related challenges at work. So what are the results of this work so far? Through our online discussion forums, we have an archive of reflections and case studies of VPPs applying gender sensitive approaches in their work and sharing the tangible difference this makes in terms of improving animal health outcomes and farm productivity. Some are also reporting that this allows women farmers to improve their knowledge and skills of livestock farming and increase their sales and income. So this is giving us direct qualitative feedback, which we're learning from and using to refine and improve our training content on gender. To address some of the gender gaps we found at VPP level, we developed online modules on preventing and de-escalating situations of verbal, physical and sexual harassment. And we also included specific activities to boost women VPP's confidence, such as proper animal handling and restraint techniques, which was one of the key challenges women VPPs reported. To conclude, I'd like to share some of the gender data gaps that we've observed in the field of animal health that we think we could would be useful to jointly address. 
Um, this includes numbers of male and female animal health service providers per country, numbers of male and female animal health service providers dropping out of the profession, impact of livestock health and productivity when women farmers have access to animal health service provision, and lastly, impact on household health, such as improved nutrition, health and wealth, when women farmers have access to animal health service provision. Thank you very much and happy to address any questions.